Hi guys, it's Ben Heath, and if you're finding that your Google ads are not converting, this is the video for you. Whenever we see a Google ad campaign that is generating clicks, but it's either not generating any conversions, or it's not generating as many conversions as we would like, we have a number of things that we check, a number of go-tos, and that's what I'm gonna walk you through in this video. What should you adjust and change if you're not getting those conversions? So the first one is to make sure that you're optimizing your keywords for conversions, not for other metrics. Now, a lot of Google advertisers don't take the time to get conversion tracking set up. That's really important. You need that data to be fed back into your ad account. That will allow you to optimize for conversions at some point. It'll also allow you to make better decisions. Now, even those that do go on to get conversion tracking set up, not all of them will then use that as their primary metric to assess their keywords. To give you an example of this, I've got an example Google ad account up. It's actually an old campaign that we ran um, for, a, for an interior design client, um, and it shows you some of the data that I'm talking about here. Now, what we can see over here in this right-hand column is cost per conversion. And whenever you're assessing an element within a Google ad campaign, so whether it's a keyword or an ad extension or even an ad, you want to primarily be looking at cost per conversion. That is the more important metric. Now, it's very easy for Google advertisers to focus on something like CTR, click-through rate, and think that the keyword with the highest CTR is the best performing. And that's not necessarily the case. Now, of course, all things being equal, we want high CTRs and high CTRs will be beneficial, but I would much rather a keyword with a lower CTR that also has a lower cost per conversion than a keyword with a higher CTR and a higher cost per conversion because the cost per conversion metric is the one that is going to override other things. So you may simply come in and check your data and see that there are keywords within your campaign that are delivering a good cost per conversion or generating enough conversions to, to be worthwhile and there are a whole bunch that aren't and you can go ahead and get rid of those. I've also seen Google advertisers do the same thing with CPC as in cost per click, thinking that a lower CPC, I'm getting more traffic, I'm, I'm getting a lower cost per click, that's a good thing. Maybe, maybe not. Often the keywords that are most likely to go on and lead to a conversion are more expensive because other advertisers are experiencing the same thing. Um, it's a difference between someone right at the beginning of their search journey and someone who's further along the line. If someone's searching for how to work out if I have a leak in my roof, that's very, very different from someone searching for roofing services near me. The person searching for that second option is far more likely to go on and convert, and you may well end up paying more in terms of cost per click to reach that person to put your ad in front of that search because it's simply more valuable and that's okay. The second thing to take a look at is your ad copy. Are you actually including a specific call to action in your ad copy? We like to use it as one of the three headlines and it really helps set the tone from the beginning. What do you want people to do? Do you want them to click through and purchase? Do you want them to click through and inquire and become a lead? You can put that sort of stuff in your ad copy right there. You can then reiterate that on the landing page so there's nice congruity. And what you're going to do with that is help avoid getting lots of clicks from people that are simply in that research phase. They're just going to click on, find out more information, click off, they're not ready yet, and you've spent money on getting them to your website, but they're not going to convert. If you are more clear about the action that people are expected to take once they click on your ad, you are more likely to get conversions and more likely to dissuade people who just aren't ready yet. Now, of course, that sort of change, putting a call to action, a strong call to action in your ad copy might lead to a lower click-through rate and a higher cost per click. But as we've already discussed, that's okay if it results in a lower cost per conversion being your most important metric. And just as a quick side note, if you've got one of the three headlines as a strong call to action, we would typically use a hook. What's the main reason why someone will buy your product or service? Does it save them time, money, et cetera? That would be one of the other headline options. And then the third headline would be more keyword focused, help with quality score, help attract that click, all that sort of stuff. Now, of course, with responsive search ads, you can enter in lots more headline variations and Google's gonna pick and choose, but that's sort of a typical structure. Those are some of the boxes we like to tick when we're writing our headlines. But we always want to make sure that there are call to actions included in those headlines, as I said, it's beneficial. Now, I've got a third point that I'm gonna tell you about in a second, but before I do, I just wanna quickly let you know about our done-for-you Google advertising services. If you want my company to create, manage, and optimize your Google ad campaigns, we can do that. We have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement, but if you click on a link in the video description below, go through a book a call with one of my team members, they can give you all the information that you need, no obligation call, of course, and hopefully we get a chance to work together. And the third thing we will take a look at if we're finding that our Google ad campaigns aren't converting as well as we would like is to redo the whole strategy and make it more specific. Now, it's very common for businesses to only serve, say, a subsection of a market, but they don't set their Google ad campaign up that way, where they're only going after people interested 
in that subsection of the market. They target keywords, for example, that are broader, that, that include other segments of a, of a broader market. And they do that because they think, well, some of those people will be interested in what we have to offer. And that's true, but you don't want to advertise to a large group where only some of those people are interested because you're going to get those clicks and you're gonna to have to pay for them and they're not going to go on to convert. You want to set up your Google Ad campaign specifically to target the subsection that you serve. Now, obviously you could do that with keywords, but you can also do that with your ad copy. So to give you an example that's very relevant to what I actually just talked about, we offer done for you Google advertising services, but we have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement. Now, if we're running a Google ad campaign for our services, we absolutely want to make sure that we are stating that we have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement, because that will dissuade so many people from clicking that would never be able to work with us. Because if someone has a $500 a month budget or a $1,000 a month budget, they're not appropriate. We don't want to attract that traffic, pay for those clicks. It's just a waste. And, and that person doesn't have a good search experience either. They're gonna bounce back out because they're not appropriate. But if we say it right there in the ad, it's going to dissuade the people that aren't suitable. It's also potentially going to help attract the people that are suitable because it may be that certain businesses are looking for agencies that deal with slightly larger budgets than some other agencies and therefore if they find that and they're spending 5k a month 10k a month 20k a month they think okay we'll click on this business's ad because it's more appropriate to us now of course that's like a budget filter requirement there's lots of different examples you could use let's say for example you are running a google ad campaign for a business that fits kitchens that puts in new kitchens but you only do it in apartment buildings you don't do it for you know, know detached houses for example I don't know if those businesses exist but let's just let's just go with it let's run with it you can think of all sorts of different examples well you would want to state the fact that you only work on apartment buildings in your ad copy because you want to a dissuade anyone that lives in a detached house or a semi-detached house whatever from actually going ahead and clicking because you can't serve them but also if someone is specifically looking for a new kitchen and they live in an apartment building they might not have searched that but they live in an apartment building then they are more likely to go ahead and click because they might think well this company specialized in what we're after perhaps they've got different ways of doing things because it's more difficult to connect up the appliances and all that sort of stuff and they'll be really suitable for us so actually not only do you dissuade the people you don't want you attract the people that you really do want and in general when Google ad campaigns aren't performing well not just from a conversion standpoint but also from like your CTR is not high enough it's not performing as well across the board getting more specific more granular with things definitely helps now a lot of businesses and Google advertisers are afraid to do this they're afraid that they're going to turn off too many people in their target market but you don't have much to lose by testing this and going super specific if you find that you just aren't really spending your budget and you would like to broaden things back out, you can always go ahead and do that. These things are quite easily reversible, but it's well worth a test to be more focused because if you do find there is enough search volume, there is enough engagement, enough clicks within that more segmented targeting option, that more segmented way of doing things, then great. You're likely to massively reduce your cost per conversion, which is gonna increase your return on ad spend. Happy days. And another thing I'd recommend to help improve your conversion rates is either switching to or adding in a performance max campaign to run alongside your search campaigns. Now I show you exactly how to create a performance max campaign from scratch in this video here. It's a detailed walkthrough, very easy for you to follow along. And if you haven't yet created a performance max campaign, the results could be fantastic. Go ahead and check it out.